We are here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Monument in honor of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday in January and remembering another fierce advocate for civil rights who was born enslaved in 1832 and rose to prominence. John Sella Martin escaped slavery in Alabama in 1856 and made his way to Boston, where he became a minister and celebrated orator. After a lecture tour of England and select stops in the European continent, sponsored by the American Missionary Association, he moved to Washington, D.C. in 1869 and was a well-loved pastor of the 15th Street Presbyterian Church. The Sentinel of Freedom. Watchmen, what of the night? The storm has begun. The thunders are pealing, the lightnings of truth like the stern flashing eye of justice that sleeps now of vengeance, unfeeling or bursting from clouds in their conflict on high. The winds of discussion like the plowshares of terror sink deep neath the surface of slavery's dead sea. And the monsters of crime on the billows of error appear to the horrified gaze of the free. The weepings of mercy in showers are failing on slavery's grim altars to dampen their blaze. The deep tones of progress like trumpets are calling to red revolution who fiercens his gaze. The earthquakes of interest are shaking with fury the groves and high places of tyranny's power and molten free speech like lava will bury its temples and altars to rise nevermore. Now stern agitation, all sleepless and busy, throws open the floodgates of feeling's deep sea. And the swift rushing torrents make nations grow dizzy as they leap over dams built to check their wild glee. The merciless whirlwinds of God's indignation are sweeping through earth, disenthralled from their cave, and reason all quenchless in bright conflagration is melting the chains from the limbs of the slave. The champions of slavery in wild desperation are cutting their flesh as the all-potent charm and pouring their blood as a needed libation, this wrath to appease and their terrors to calm, the truth-crushing genie of policies waving, his wand of corruption to silence the roar, and the great fish of mammon, his Jonahs are saving from watery destruction to die on the shore. The altars of bondage are blazing with fire. The slave in his chains is its grim sacrifice. The tones of the priest rise higher and higher. But his God now in conflict regards not his cries. The merchant in fear brings his gift to the altar. The statesman and jurist bring laws all in vain. The demagogue's accents in doubt begins to falter. Though union is sounded again and again. But all is in vain. The heavens grow thicker with portents of dread to oppression's weak soul. And almighty truth flashes brighter and quicker while terrific reason and thunder still roll. The earthquake is shattering their prisons to pieces amid the eruptions of volcanic speech, while whirlwinds and torrents in fury increases, though tyrants alternately curse and beseech. And thus shall it be until freedom shall cover with an ocean of light our nation so dark, till justice and mercy united shall hover or manhood untrammeled in liberty's arc then neath truth's great sunlight by conflict unfaded 
and earth renovated by fire and flood, shall man in his majesty stand undergraded, the Lord of creation, the image of God. In addition to sermons, John Sella Martin wrote journalism and poetry and briefly edited the abolitionist newspaper, The New Era. His best-known poem, The Hero and the Slave, was published in 1870. The Colored American praised him as one of the most eloquent, able platform orators of the antebellum period, and the Washington Evening Star called him one of the best educated colored men in the country and a remarkably fluent speaker. Martin was an important voice opposing the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871, which repealed the charters of Washington City, Washington County, and Georgetown to create a single municipal government for the entire federal district with a territorial system in which the governor and city council were appointed rather than elected. Martin wrote incisively, in plain Anglo-Saxon, the old fogies are opposed to Negro suffrage, and as they cannot withdraw it, they seek to diminish, if not destroy, the opportunities for its exercise. In 1872, Martin was elected to the state legislature of Louisiana, but he was not allowed to serve due to his race. Instead, he won an appointment as an agent to the U.S. Post Office and wrote for the Louisiana newspaper. He died in New Orleans in 1876 from an overdose of laudanum. It is unclear if his death was intentional or accidental. <laughs>